back by popular demand. Who is the best golf YouTuber? Today, we are breaking down the most requested golf YouTuber. You asked for it, you got it. The granddaddy of them all here in this video. The man with over two million subscribers, Mr. Rick Shields himself. Let's dive into his golf YouTube power rankings. So our rankings are based on five categories, our swing, our driver, our iron game, our short game, our putting, and we also give a swagger score of one, two, five stars. Each category is worth 20 points. Maximum score would be 100, five stars, the best you can do. That would be the greatest YouTube golfer of all time. So let's first start off with Rick's swing analysis portion of the video and see where he's at. Most of the uh, stuff I'm taking is gonna be from Rick's Break 75 there at TPC Sawgrass. Spectacular course, I've played there myself. Here he is on the first hole, and we're gonna break down his swing from this shot here, which he's taken driver, shorter par four, tough driving hole. Whoo, he's gotta be nervous playing the, uh, the gem of Pete Dye's designs. He ropes it right down the middle of the fairway. Let's dig into his swing and see what he's got going on. I love to get the swing here on my V1 app. So if you don't have the V1, you might want to grab that video of your swing. It's a great app. So first and foremost, he's got a phenomenal setup. I love it. Just powerful. Really nothing to nitpick over about his setup. He's a bigger, taller guy and everything looks pretty solid in his setup position. I'm gonna draw a line right on his swing plane like so, and let's look as he takes it back. He's a very handsy player, meaning he just gets his wrist set really quickly and really early. Now, Rick did a video a while back where he's working on his swing and he's doing some drills to kind of eliminate that, and we'll dive into that a little bit later, but let's just say for now, he sets those wrists very quickly, very early, which causes him to open the club face up. And so at the top of the backswing, his club face is a bit open. You know, so he's just getting that up here, setting those hands, and the face is open versus like a Dustin Johnson or a bowed wrist player with a more shut face here. Rick is a little bit open. And Rick was doing a drill where he was working, trying to take it back, like really shutting the club face. Now this is gr a great drill, don't get me wrong, but unless you're going to do that consistently every day and really dedicate your time into that, I wouldn't recommend that for him. I'm gonna recommend something a little bit later that will correct it without having to really worry about it. But it looks like he's kind of given up on this move here for now, and I'm glad and happy for him about that. There's nothing wrong with being a handsy player. I'm a handsy player. It just takes a lot of practice to be consistent. And Rick's making a lot of videos, so I don't think he's practicing all that much on that. Needless to say, the swing is pretty solid. He drops it nicely from the inside, gets those hands nice and low. I love seeing that, and uh, great extension and release through impact. He's got good motion, good fluidity. He seems to always have great balance in his golf swing and that I love. And I love the fact he's got a lot of good club head speed. That's hard to teach. Seems like he's solid in that area. So uh, Mr. Two Million here has a solid swing. I'm gonna give him a swing score of 18 out of 20. It's really good. So now on to Rick's driving game. I'll tell you what, for such a handsy player, he sure seems to hit a lot of fairways. I like that. One, his fundamentals are very sound. It's just very handsy. The thing about handsy players is you need a lot of practice to be consistent. Like if I just set my wrists all day, you know, I'm gonna be a mess because I've been a handsy player and I gotta work on it a ton. So my theory of why he's so good is this, and I think I'm right on the money with this. That dude, like he'll do a Titleist driver review, he'll do like Cobra reviews, he 
he does reviews on like TaylorMade. And you get it, right? He's doing tons and tons of driver reviews. So my theory is that he's practicing. He's hitting tons and tons of drivers all the time, even with his handsy swing. So therefore, he's getting in the reps he needs to have a consistent handsy swing. And if you go and watch that TPC Sawgrass video, dude hits a ton of fairways. He's striping it, in my opinion. He's consistent with his drives. Like, I would take him as a partner, scramble, even alternate shot, and kind of give him the harder driving holes. He's got some length, got some pop, and although he, he'll miss left and right, for the most part, he's getting it out there in play or very close to in play. I really, really am a fan of his driving game. So for that, the granddaddy gets a score from me, power ranking in driving category, 18 out of 20. Now on to Rick's iron game. Where do you think he lives? What, do you th what would you score him in his iron game? This is where things kind of start to get a bit off track. It's interesting, for as handsy as he is and good with the driver, it is kind of a hindrance, in my opinion, in his iron game, probably for the same reason he's great with his driver, is because he's most likely not practicing a lot with his irons. So that's any mid iron shot. There's a lot of some thin shots and fat shots. It's a bit right, it's a bit left, it's just inconsistent. That's because of the handsiness and probably lack of practice off the grass. You can get away with being a little handsy with a ball that's teed up because you, these days, I mean, drivers are a lot easy to hit. There's a lot of area to miss and still get good distance out of it. Well, here you go with your irons. You got a lot less room for error here. And he's using the Titleist T100s. Phenomenal club. I have the T100S because they're a little bit more forgiving. You can miss a little bit more. So my recommendation for him would be just maybe get a little more forgiving club. It helps me. And I'm guessing I might practice a little more. I don't know what his practice is like, but I practice a lot. Well, not a lot, but a little bit. So that's one thing I would do. And the, the drill I'm gonna give you all, if you struggle with this and you don't get the, the practice time that you need, what I'm gonna give you is going to help everybody's game who struggles in the same way. Like I'm good with the driver, but everything else is kind of eh, not so great. Because ideally you want your iron game to at least be consistent. Like if you pull it left, then that be consistent left. If you push it right, be consistent right. This is my seven iron, carried 170. That's kind of consistently where I live just a little draw. And so I want to know when I'm hitting to the green, at least where it's going to miss. So that being said, in my opinion, I'm going to give Rick an iron score of 15 out of 20. Still pretty good. Oh, and uh, real quick, link in the video description below. I'm teaming up with Mike Burry. We're doing a two day intensive, awesome golf school with a few students. So if you're interested in something like that, link below all the details there. Now on to Rick's putting. He uses, I believe, an even roll putter. Different than this model, but similar design construction. That only, they're great putters, so I love that. You get the bonus point for using the even roll. I think two things. One is he's probably not practicing his putting a lot, but He's still a great putter inside 10 feet. He's really good inside 10 feet. There's a reason for that in my opinion, but his lag putting is suspect a bit. And here's why in my opinion. I mean, his setup, it's spot on. Like I wouldn't change a thing. He looks good. He looks good over the ball. He's not too far away. He's not too close. He, his eyes hang nicely where they should. The putter sits nicely on the ground on the green, so everything is where it should be. Looking at his putts, it doesn't look like he's aiming off. Everything looks solid. And his stroke doesn't look like he's doing any loopy moves or he's yanking it or pushing it or fanning it. I think the reason why he's so good with the short putts and not as good 
with the longer lag putts is for this reason here. Let me know if you agree, is that his stroke is so pure right in here on those little guys. He's just back and forth, so smooth. It's just the same speed going back and the same speed going forward. Ideally, that's great. Here's where it gets you on the long putts is you take it back farther and then you try to have the same speed going through and inevitably when you do that, you slow down when you hit the ball. You decelerate as you make contact with the ball. And what does that do? Well, that affects the contact you have on the ball. It affects the roll a little bit and it will affect your distance control. So all that stuff would be off a bit. So what I would recommend if that's something you struggle with is just do this little drill like this when you're putting 30 footers. I want you to take it back just a little bit, like take it back like you would a 10 footer, same distance, and then just really accelerate through the ball and do a bunch of those just right there. And what you're doing is you're training your body to accelerate through the ball. And that's ultimately what you want more acceleration for the longer putts than the shorter ones. So that's what I think causes him to struggle with the long putts. But I think that's something he can fix like overnight or over 30 minutes, to be honest with you. So for putting, like there's kind of two scores, like the short putts, man, he's like a 19 out of 20. But the long putts, he's like a 12. So overall, I'm gonna give Rick total putting score of 16 out of 20. It's still pretty good. And it's easy fix, that's why it's only 16. You don't have to overhaul your whole putting stroke. All right, I saved the short game score for last. The moment you've all been waiting for. This is the most important part of everyone's game. Here's a little 60 yarder. You want these to get close to that hole at more often than not, but that goes long and that's inconsistency. And sometimes you'll do that and yank it left a little bit. That's actually pretty good. And then look, sometimes you're gonna come up out of it and thin it a little and chunk it in the bunker. That's kind of unfortunately a lot of what Rick has going on currently. What's Troubling for me is this. Typically, the handsy player has a phenomenal short game. That's usually the best part of their game because they can feel it all in their hands and they can just flip at it and get good spin on it and they're good at uh, just eye-hand coordination. But unfortunately, short game right now is Rick's kryptonite. But I do believe that can be fixed easily and quickly. And this one drill will not only fix his short game, but fix his iron game and fix his driver game. And if this is something that troubles you and your short game is off and you're very handsy, I would recommend doing this drill right here. I would get an alignment stick here. I'm just gonna hold it right here against the club, against my left hand, against my left side. And I'm just gonna take it back. If I'm real handsy, then that stick sets. I don't want it. I want it kind of on my body for a long time. And then when I go through, I don't want it to whack my rib cage because that hurts a little bit. So it's right up against my rib cage, keep it there long. And see the rotation that I have. It's not gonna go nearly as far, that's okay. What I'm doing is practicing taking the wrists out of my swings a little bit and getting more rotation to be the driving force of my swing. And then if I'm practicing these 60 yarders, I'll just take a little bit more club this time and practice the exact same thing so I don't have to swing as hard. That's perfect. So that's the drill I would recommend for you if this is something you struggle with. Or if you're Rick, I would recommend, if I were Rick's coach, which I'm not, I don't think he would want me to be. But if I were, 
This is what I would have him do, and I would have him do it like this for two hours a week. Work on this with your wedges, your pitch shots, your very short irons, and then 30 minutes of that lag putting thing we talked about, and that's it. I guarantee you, guaranteed, if Rick did that two hours a week, he would be breaking 75 in every one of his breaking 75 videos, and he would soon have to change the title of that to breaking 70. Because even with the seven iron, you can hit some pretty darn good shots. And then when you start working without the stick, all of a sudden you're a lot less handsy and a lot more consistent. This, not only do you get the practice you need with the short game, but it uh, fixes some of your problems slowly and evolves into your swing without having to make major changes. So Rick's short game score is a 14 out of 20. Currently, you do that, you, and with your touch and feel that I believe you have, 19 out of 20 coming, guaranteed. And uh, what do you think Rick's swagger score is? He's got a lot of style, a lot of personality. He's always happy, never seems like he's in a, a, a foul mood. Every now and then he drops a little bleep, but uh, that's all part of it. And I think I'm gonna give him a swagger score uh, four stars. Four out of five, it's really good. So in my opinion, Rick Shields' power ranking is an 81 with four stars. Let me know what you think and who you want me to uh, rank next. Love you guys, see you next time.